What's going on there, ladies and gentlemen? It's the supreme mathematics of expat relocation coming to you from the NYN workspace. You know how we do. So we only got a couple days left in Campuchia, but we haven't done the central market, even though we've been there on many occasion. Today, we, we're gonna go and film it for you guys, because it's one of the top things that people search when they're looking at coming to Cambodia for some reason. It ranks very highly, so we're gonna make a video for it, and hopefully you guys will uh, like what you see. It is a nice market, it's beautiful, it's a work of art, Art Deco. Um, it's a bit of a tourist market, so it's mostly trinkets, touristy things, but uh, I think when I was there last time, there is some like local services as well. Um, it's not a market necessarily for expats, it's more like a market for people who are just coming to town as tourists for a few days. But it's interesting and the neighborhood around it is beautiful, so let's go take a look. Hey guys, what's going on? Our street is completely flooded today. We still gotta take the bell. What's up with it guys? So we are at the Central Market in Phnom Penh. The building is beautiful, it's an Art Deco building. I'm gonna try to get a shot for you if it's not raining when we're done over here. Um, it's a tourist market, so a lot of the products are geared towards tourists, but they have local products as well. Um, you can look around and see basically uh, it's a lot of clothing and there's a, the occasional handcraft and you know sneakers and this kind of thing. Things that a tourist or someone would want while they're in Cambodia, but also things that local people for sure would buy. You know, you can definitely see it's got a little bit of both. Um, this is definitely a place where you'll want to haggle more, whereas at Oracy Market, you're more likely to get a, a pretty straight price. Here, you're going to want to negotiate for pretty much everything. Uh, it's a central market, so you know, anytime you have a market that's in the center of the city in Asia and it's a tourist destination, you know, you're going to have to make sure you don't pay like six times what you should be paying for a t-shirt. Anyways, we're going to walk around and show you a little more. Looks like everybody's packing it up because of the rain. Kind of close to the end of the day anyway. Yeah, what time do they close, you said? Uh, they usually close around 6 p.m., guys, and it's like about 5 now. And I imagine with the rain that everybody's starting to pack up their shops a little early. See, like a lot of the markets in Cambodia, you have a lot of the really good textiles and materials and like fabrics you can find i mean this is obviously a central market so it's more for tourists but you know you can see the the difference in quality compared to what you might find in like uh, vietnam for example uh, i think they make decent clothes in vietnam and they have all the same fab fabric shops but here it's a lot easier to find things that will fit a westerner or that are designed for tourists things like that as well as, well as local products but it's good because you know, if you're only in town for a short time and you need to grab like, you know, a pair, a cheap pair of fake sneakers or a cheap outfit, you know, it's, it's not a bad place to know about. As you guys can see, normally there's like a food setup. Um, right now, not so much. And uh, yeah, here we go, some handcrafts. So it looks like a sneaker spot there. Some handcrafts here. You see what I'm saying, guys? Kind of like a mix of like touristy, but also stuff that probably local people would definitely buy. Oh, sorry, Ong, not right now. You see the level of English, guys? It's very high here in Phnom Penh, comparatively to neighboring countries. For a prospective expat, you know, having people who speak good English is very helpful. Uh, looks like the section is all belts, bags. Seems like they got just about everything here. Um, some jeans and clothes again. Shoes seem that way. I definitely remember this place from last time. I think we bought like, um, didn't you get a belt here, Jen? I think I did actually. Right? But, you know, I don't oh, remember because it's been a pretty long time. Oh, look so at the kitty. Cute. Oh, it's a little market kitty. So cute. I think I got a bag here too last time. All right, now it looks like we're coming into more shoes and like fancier clothes. Yeah, more like dressy dresses. 
skirt, pants. Seems like this is like mostly clothes section, right? Yeah. Kind of a mix of dress clothes, casual clothes, some fake designers, some that look like they actually are real, maybe they're just second hand. Yeah, maybe. These are very decent looking Levi's. If they are fake, they're very impressive. Yeah. That's what I was saying before about the quality of the textiles here in Cambodia. Uh, I found that in Vietnam, you can find good quality stuff, but more often than not, you find mostly garbage in the markets when it comes to clothes. Yeah. You know, um, you've had to buy a few shirts before with work, things like that. And, yeah, uh, they just kind of fell apart if they're not even a month or so. Whereas here, you know, I have noticed that like, even like the quality of the fakes, the quality of like, you know, the stuff that they're probably making for the same exact factory here, you know, that's making the name brand is making the fake, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, you're definitely gonna get a nice selection of quality things. And again, it's more of it, I think it's more tourist here than there is in Saigon, for sure. Phnom Penh is kind of like the, it, 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 it is definitely more of a backpackery vibe here to me than I ever felt anywhere in Saigon. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's one thing that is kind of interesting about Cambodia is you have that, uh, you know, you do have that backpacker influence more like similar to like maybe Thailand. So this is one of the markets where people will try to get you to buy stuff and generally will try to overcharge you. But again, if you, you negotiate a little bit, you can see there's some good deals to be had. Hey, Sasadai. Uh, yeah, just meaning to do this for you guys for a minute. I apologize we didn't do a central market video sooner, but it is a place that people are for sure interested in seeing but we've had a lot of stuff to do with business, content creation, so we apologize for not getting it done sooner. Let's go uh, have a little stroll to the other side of the market, I guess, see what we see. So as you guys can see, it's a rainy day. Yeah, it's pretty gloomy. Yeah, it's uh, not awesome. <laughs> it was awesome up in our apartment in the sky. Yeah. You know, so watching the clouds. But we love you guys, so we wanted to make this video for you just before we left. By the time you see all this, it'll be a while because it takes us forever to get caught up. We make a lot of content for you guys. I hope everybody enjoys it. If you do, please smash the like button. Um, definitely, you know, leave us comments, uh, share the videos, any of that stuff helps. If you like kind of a more natural, regular person approach to travel blogging. You know, we're not really trying to make a formula. We want to just make the, you know, authentic videos so you can actually get a sense of what it's like to be somewhere and, you know, the pros and the cons to that. So the last time I think we are in this market was in uh, 2017, right, Jay? Yeah, it would have been something like that, yeah. We've been here three times now. Yeah, it's, it looks pretty much the same. It does, right? Does it bring back memories for you? Yeah, um, I do think the Orasi market is much bigger though, right? Oh yeah, this is not so big compared to the Orasi market. That place yeah. is massive. Um, it's also not as, you know, many uh, practical home appliance kind of things as there is at the Orasi market, but it does seem like they have a bit of everything. 
Yeah, that's, I think, so. I think yeah. they all have a little bit, you know. Like, see, this stuff, guys, like, Orsi Market is, like, thousands, Mostly, yeah. thousands of these kind of stores that have the home appliances, yeah, water filters, right. pans. Um, this is more like something in the center of the city. If you need to get a cheap pan or you need to get, like, something on the spot, you'd be able to come here and utilize this, depending on where you live. But bear in mind, guys, that all over Phnom Penh, there's local markets, and the local markets are going to be a lot cheaper. Oh than uh, coming to a main touristy market like this. I think over here is a clock tower or something, right? If you turn this way. Yeah, look. Ah, here we go. Wow, so pretty. So once again, guys, like I was saying, this is an art deco structure. It's very, very beautiful. Um, look, you got all your knives in oh. case you got to jack somebody up. You got your butterfly knife, self-defense flashlights, and shavers. Tripods, oh, she's got some tripods. We need a tripod. Yeah. All right, let's go take a look in here and we'll come back and say hello. Look, yeah. more knives, more baton style flashlights, razors, oh, this is good. Look, they have the Bluetooth uh, this is, speakers. This so. is like the guy's shop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the toys when I was a bouncer, batons and tasers and shit. I don't know if they have that. They have headphones too. Look, they have the little shavers. They have some GoPros. Are those oh. real or are those knockoffs? I think it's a knockoff. Knockoffs. Or, or no, no, I think it might just be the case. Is it? Oh yeah, maybe it's the waterproof. Just the waterproof case. case. Yeah. yeah Still, how good is this if you're a tourist? Like. Yeah, they got a bunch of watches. It's kind of dark in here, but hopefully you can see. What's up with it, guys? Does anybody need a watch? Look at this. Jesus. Hey, Sasarai. You have a lot of watches. <laughs> Many glasses, too. Okay. She has the watches, man. That's crazy. Yeah. So everybody's packing it up for the day because it's raining, guys, but... This section is mostly jewelry, usually. Yeah, this is normally like a jewelry market, but... You know, everybody's going home. I guess it's like nearly closing time and it's soaked out. You guys can, I don't wow, know if you can look see. At that. Yeah. yeah, it's not great. But we did want to show you around. It's, it's a nice, uh, nice market, very beautiful market. Jewelry. So, this is one of the only ones where people will really try to sell you stuff. Like yeah. Russian market, a little bit, but they're used to foreigners in there, I guess, too. Mm -hmm. I guess that Russian market in here would be the two where. You have a chance of somebody really trying to push you to buy something or overcharge you, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you know, or see market or any other local markets that you're going to get a, you know, no one's even going to pay attention that you're there. It's a uh, different experience, right? You come down to Central Market to see the architecture, but actual shopping, I'd probably do at the or see market. <laughs> But it's still pretty cool, and you can see local people still utilize it. So obviously there's vendors in here that are selling things at fair prices or local people wouldn't be in here, you know. So it's not a 100% touristy market, but it's as close to a kind of like a, a Benton market in Saigon that you're going to find here in Cambodia. I still think maybe less dangerous than Benton. I've seen tourists get into unmarked taxis and... Those fools kidnap people. Oh, yeah, that, that was soft. Uh. Yeah, 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 it's also die. I'm um, okay, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, so we're wandering around the little nooks and crannies. Look, there's like retail in every, every square meter is utilized. Yeah, I think we got a bag here too, John. Every, uh, I think so too. We bought a backpack here. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah, yeah, a backpack. And it was a good one actually. It was. It lasted me for a couple of years. This is what I was saying, man. The quality of goods in Cambodia. I actually haven't. Most of the stuff I've bought here, I've been pretty happy with. Yeah. I mean, I don't go for the lowest quality, but you know, even the fakes. You know, you can get a variety of quality.
All right, guys, so we're gonna try to figure out how to get out of here. They're closing it up. Um, rainy day. All right, guys, that was Phnom Penh Central Market. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, very beautiful building, architecturally, uh, Art Deco style, real, real nice building. Um, some interesting shops, but definitely a tourist market. Lots of people saying you wanna buy, you wanna buy, you wanna buy. So if you're gonna be living out here, check out more local markets, but it's definitely worth a day to come down here and hang out and maybe you know grab souvenirs or if you have family in town, this would be a place where you could find a lot of stuff. So, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's a tourist market in the center of the city. Are you thinking of living, investing, buying property, buying land, working, or spending any significant time in Cambodia? Cambodia is an amazing country that offers a wide range of different opportunities for someone who has an open mind. If you're thinking about coming to Cambodia for the first time, we offer a consulting service for people who are looking to have everything done for them before they arrive. They want their housing contacts, their employment, their consultants, whatever they want to find in the country, they want it set up. That's what we do for you. We make it easy so that you don't have to worry about scams, problems, or other pitfalls that new expats face in this amazing country. Hey, what's up? I'm D from Canada. Hook up with the New York Nomad if you want a smooth ride into Vietnam or any Southeast Asian countries. Hey, my name is Aaron. Get in contact with the New York Nomad. If you want to get into Vietnam, hit them up. They'll get you in securely and professionally. Yo, this is Uncle Hollywood. I'm telling you right now, the New York Nomad got me a job. He's legit. Hit him up. Check him out. New York Nomad set me up in Vietnam. <laughs> Yo, my man got me a job. Come to Vietnam. Hey, what's up guys? You thinking about coming to Vietnam? You're not sure where to start? You've heard a lot of things online. You don't know what's true, you don't know what's not. We offer a consulting service where we help you get on your feet in Vietnam. We give you advice on negotiating contracts with employers. We help you with real estate agents, visa agents that are reliable and that you can trust. And we help you get started in this amazing country and get on your feet. We help you get into different opportunities that might be more difficult for you if you were just landing in the country on your own. And we help you avoid a lot of the, the pitfalls and problems problems that you could have as a newcomer here. We provide you with reliable job recruiters, visa agents, real estate agents, and advice. If you guys are thinking about coming to Vietnam, hit us up for a consultation. We'll help you get started, help you get on your feet, and hopefully you'll love Vietnam as much as we do.